Oops, wrong. Hey YouTube, uh, it's JCT from Team Execution here. Um, just here to talk about a couple things today. First off is Goyo Guardian, and I know this card has seen a lot of play uh, around 2010, 2009, 2010 in the meta, where this card is completely broken. You basically swing past any uh, Exceed monster, and it com excuse me, you swing past any Synchro monster, and completely destroys them. And these special summons your side. So basically, you attack your opponent's Stardust, and then special summons the Stardust to your side. And after that, you use Stardust's effect, you negate, bring it back to your opponent's side of the field, attack again, attack again. It's just, this card just recycles Stardust's ability, making it like so much, pretty much yours at the cost of um, at the cost of losing one attack. But overall, it's just a really nice card. Uh, with exceeds around, this card isn't as broken like Acid Golden Destruction, two lo two rank level threes. It's a rank three monster, uh, three thousand attack, three thousand defense. So I mean, it has its downsides, but I mean, Goyo level six, twenty hundred, and then two thousand defense. It's pretty hard to get over, but. Goyo might be coming back. Hopefully he does. Next I want to talk about uh, some cards that haven't been seeing a lot of play in the meta as of lately. Um, first I want to talk about the Synchros. Chaos King Archfiend. Um, Dark World players. You can run this. You can also run Dark Highlander. Um, but Chaos King Archfiend is completely broke. This card gets around a majority of Synchro monsters and Exceed monsters because it basically it switches the attack and defense of all your opponent's monsters. It's a, it's a shield and sword for your opponent's monsters basically. And it just completely wrecks them. This card is so good. 2600 attack, 2600 defense. It's just amazing. Um, it's one fiend type tuner. Basically Fabled Raven, plus one or more non-tuners. Um, as long as this card declares an attack, the attack doesn't have to go through. As long as it declares an attack, and the declaration goes through, uh, when it enters battle, when it enters the um, the battle step, then its effect kicks in, switches all the switches all your opponent's uh, defense and attack, uh, switches them around. And then you just you go forget you can just stab at their monsters. No matter how strong they are, they're definitely gonna be weak. Especially um wind up Zen mains. Wind up Zen mains cannot stand a chance against this guy. Because uh wind up Zen mains fifteen hundred attack, twenty twenty one hundred defense. It's it's a good wall. But this card says no to it. It switches the attack and defense and all your monsters basically can swing over it as long as they're fifteen hundred and above. Excuse me, sixteen hundred and above. So it's just really broken. This card right here. Next, um Flamevelt Urquizos, um, as you know, floaters have been popping around lately, um, especially uh, Torgai Tengu plants. I know they're not seeing a lot of play in the meta now, but Flamevelt Urquizos just Flamevelt Urquizos just likes to punish people. It punishes them for putting their monsters in defense. It punishes them for setting monsters. And this card just basically says, you know what? I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my flaming fist and shove it up your ass. But because it's that good, 2100 gains 300 every time it destroys a monster. And, and inflicts piercing damage basically. This card is just rid ridiculously broken, but the problem is 400 defense makes it easy to get over. And if you book it, then it's pretty much screwed. Next, I'll talk about Kaiku, the Ghost Destroyer. Kaiku is ridiculous, uh, especially in the whole meta with the whole chaos uh, confusion up. Um, Kaiku is especially broken. He basically, while he's on the field, your opponent can't move and play monsters, which locks out BLS and Sork. And being 1800 attack and a dark type, he helps fuel the chaos engine. And this card, every time he deals battle damage, he removes to play one of your opponent's monsters. So it's just a really good card overall. Um, really good, really nice. I honestly, this card has not seen enough play in the meta. Next, ah, uh, next you have Breaker the Magical Warrior. Breaker is completely broken, um, in my opinion, because with uh, with Genix Ally Birdman out. Um, this card can recycle his ability. He's basically an MST on crack. You summon him, you pop an opponent's back row, and you bounce for Birdman. You special summon Birdman. And then this card goes back to your hand, so next turn you can abuse its effect again. In 1900, it gets over Tengu, so you attack the Tengu, and then you blow up a back row. And you can sync with it or something, or bounce it back to your hand and reuse its ability. So this card's really nice, especially with Birdman. Um, I don't have any Birdman on me, I traded mine off, but yeah, it's just really nice. Next for spells, Intercept Wave. Intercept Wave is really good, especially against uh, Synchro Plant decks. It likes to switch the Synchro Monsters to defense and return to the Asher deck during the end phase. So it's just pretty fucking good. And it's a quick place too, so it kind of wrecks your opponent really badly. Noble Man of Extermination. Um, Noble Man is just ridiculously broke too. Um, he basically allows you to destroy, uh, destroy and move from play an opponent's spell or trap card. Um, if it's a trap card, both players search each other's decks and... Um, you move from play all copies of that. Now, if you're running a deck that's mostly based on uh, spell cards, this card may uh, may be pretty good. Um, a lot, there's been a lot of uh, 
confusion between this card and MST and which one's better. In my opinion, it's really situational. If you're playing against Glads, this card is obviously better because um, Gladiator Beast, Gladiator Beast, uh, a key stay, I think, or a quest, doesn't get its search. Um, you can't search this card back because it's removed from play. So, pretty damn broke. Next, Chaos Trap Hole, with the whole light and dark format in this meta, especially with the release of the new Dragon's Collide structure deck, this card has is just ridic ridiculous. It's a solemn warning, but it removes it from play instead. Instead of uh, just sending it to the graveyard, it removes it from play. You pay 2,000. It only works for light and darks. It's as long as they summon. So, Next, Crevice into the different dimension. Crevice is basically a DD Crow, except you have to declare an attribute and you remove from play up to two. Exactly two, I think. It was up to two. A total of two. Um, monsters from the graveyard. The, the graveyard, not either. It's not uh, your opponent's graveyard, just uh, either player's graveyard. This is from play, so if you're playing against wind ups and your opponent has like a uh, wind ups and mighty, and you have like this card set, and then she's pot of avarice, and you declare water type, you can just banish those wind ups and mighties, and they can't get it back. And then pot of avarice fizzles up and dies. Trap stun. Trap stun was so good with the X saber, with the um, whole X saber format. Um, trap stun most likely needs to come back, uh, especially due with the whole trap heavy decks now. Um, scrap, dra scrap dragons out there rampaging all over back row, so this card is definitely a want to use in your uh, in your decks, especially when you have scrap dragon on the field, or especially when you want to summon your monsters out easily without being uh, without having your monsters interrupted, or without your plays being interrupted. So, reckless greed. This card stacks. Um, if you activate two on the same turn, you draw four. You skip your next two draw phases, but it's pretty good. Um, it's similar to shard, except for the little down cost that you have to skip your next two draw phases. But um, with like with hyper librarian out there, with a lot with all this draw power, this card it can be pretty useful. Um, the whole you can't draw for two turns won't really be a minus for you. It's more of a plus. So I mean, you can you you can work your way around reckless greed. And last but not least, Seven Tools of the Bandit. Seven Tools of the Bandit is just ridiculous. Um, this card basically negates any trap and destroys it. I also would put Magic Drain in here, but I don't have a Magic Drain. So, I mean, Seven Tools is just really good. Um, pay a thousand to get the activation of a trap card and destroy it. Uh, most of your time, your opponent will either have to chain with Solemn Judgment or let it slide. Because um, a lot of people don't run counter counter traps uh, in this deck, so in, in, in their deck. So, it's just really nice. And it's a Speed Spell 3. Uh, gets around solemn judgment. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, the new cards that came out in Photon Shockwave, and a little comparison. Now, the first one is the Huge Revolution is over. This card being reprinted as a common is completely ridiculous. Um, now, this card just this card can wreck so many decks. It's ridiculous. Um, first off, this card this card says no to Scrap Dragon because it doesn't say from your side of the field. It's two or more on the field. So Scrap Dragon, target one of their monsters, target one of your monsters, or target one card of their side of the field, one card on your side of the field, and pop both. If you chain this, if you chain this, you, Scrap Dragon dies. This card is so fucking good. Um, it also stops Heavy, it stops Dark Hole, and also on top of that, you can't Solemn Warning this. You can Solemn Warning a Starlight Road, but you can't Solemn this, because this card is so good. And on top of that, uh, you can't most of, you can't use Starlight Road on Geysars, because it destroys up to two, it doesn't say it just exactly destroys two. But you can use it on this, because as long as it destroys two or more, it would destroy two or more. So this card is a lot better um, compared to Starlet Road. Um, there's been a lot of controversy on which one to run. Now, Starlet Road, excuse me, this one. No, nope, yeah, this one. Okay, Starlet Road gives you a lot more uh, options, um, especially because this card is just, it not only negates your opponent's attack, but it also summons a Star Dragon from your extra deck. Now you you get one free negation. But after that, Stardust just goes away. You can't summon it again. At least just like Avarice, especially summon it again. But um, Starlight Road basically it negates Heavy Storm, it negates Dark Hole, it negates uh, Regeki, just all that stuff. But it doesn't negate Snipe Hunter. Excuse me, no, that's, that's Starlight. My bad. That's Star. That's Stardust. My bad. But um, just in general, like Star Starlight Road is very situational. It can't negate Scrap Dragon. It cannot negate Scrap Dragon. Because Scrap Dragon destroys specifically one monster you control, uh, one card you control, and one card your opponent controls. But on the other hand, Huge Revolution only says two or more monsters, uh, cards on the field that would be destroyed. You can negate that the destruction, negate the effect, and destroy that card. So, and it's a counter trap. This card is not a counter trap. Counter trap, 
not a counter trap. Counter trap, not a counter trap. But this card gives you a plus one. Uh, with the whole st with the Stardust thing. So, it's it depends on the situation. I mean, you can run one of both, and then see how see how well it works out, or just tech which one. But in all honesty, Starlight Road is not the better fit for me. Um, the huge revolution is over. Is a better fit for me. I li I honestly like this card. It's a counter trap. Your opponent doesn't have as many responses to it. They can't chain traps done to this like they can to this. So it's just ridiculous. And last but not least, Royal Prison. Now Royal Prison is so broke. Um, Royal Prison just ridiculous. Um, because it it stops plant plays. It stops uh, it stops cards from coming back from the graveyard basically. Um, it kills wind ups. It hurts insectors. Excuse me, it does not. It, oh, sorry, it doesn't hurt injectors. Well, actually, it, it sort of does hurt injectors because of centipede. Um, excuse me, not centipede. Uh, injector, Giga Mantis, and Giga Hornet. No, not G Giga Hornet and Giga Weevil. No, no, Giga Mantis and Giga Weevil, which uh, both have the ability of special summoning um, a an injector from the graveyard when they're destroyed. Um, so this card is pretty pretty good. Um, it stops monarchs because Treeborn can't come back. And you basically run out of tribute fodder. If you if you remove from play, if you kill their monarch, they run out of tribute fodder. Um, on top of that, um, it stops plants. Spore can't come back. Debris dragon can't come back. Um, it kills red eyes darkness metal because red eyes darkness metal can only special summon the hand now, and it prevents you from summoning from the graveyard. It kills light pulsar. His light pulsar sp takes uh, special summon the monster from the graveyard. Uh, level. S Seven or higher dark type, I believe. So we can bring back Red Dragon, but with this card, it says no. This card basically says it's basically roll oppression without the cost and uh, without the summon without the summoning condition uh, around. Like oh, you can special summon the hand on negate it. No, but this card is basically it's basically like a mini oppression without the whole um, minus eight hundred life points or special summoning from anywhere except the graveyard. This card just said this card just says no to the graveyard. So. It's overall just really good. It locks down the graveyard. It's pretty much like a Necker Valley, this card. I mean, except for the fact that they can remove and play cards from the graveyard, especially some to the field. Like, this card in Necker Valley is just completely broke. So, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, and one more card I think might be coming back from the ban list. Um, Billy Brake talked about it. He said we needed it in this format, so I'm just going to get right down to it real quick. Royal Oppression. Now, some of you more veteran duelists know what I'm talking about. Royal Oppression. This card was the shit when Black Wings were here. This card was the shit when it was basically gadgets. And uh, gadgets were running amok with gadget with Royal Oppression. They basically they, you negate your opponent's summons, uh, all their special summons, and then you just slowly poke for game with gadgets. But, I mean, Royal Oppression is just really nice. Um, it needs to come back into the format, especially with the whole... Every deck is, like, running turbos with tour guides. And, um... Rabbit, Rabbit being a complete asshole. Uh, this card says no to Rabbit. This card says no to a lot of special summons, and it helps um, players maintain better field control, better field advantage, and it works for both players. So I don't know why this card, this card would get banned in the first place. I mean, I understand it was abused in Black Wings or any deck that basically ran uh, Zephyros the Whirlwind. I think I don't remember, but uh, Zephyros basically you bounce a card on your side of the field back to your hand, and you special summon it. Now I I can see that with with, with royal oppression because these bounce with Zephyros you bring I mean you, you bounce this card you bring back Zephyros you have a sixteen hundred beater and you synchro with it and summon it into Black Rose and you basically blow up the field so I mean this card needs to come back Goyo needs to come back this card stops Goyo and Goyo stops succeeds the, the black cards yeah but anyways um that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about um. Don't forget to like this video, uh, subscribe above right here, I think, somewhere here, somewhere over here, and uh, share this video with your friends, Just, uh, tell me what you guys think about it, uh, that's pretty much it, peace out, uh, JCT from Team Executions, signing out.